Hello everyone and thank you so much for joining me for Tuesday night Bible study. Um, Pastor has asked if I will teach a series on self-care and so we will begin this evening on a 10-week series of self-care. We will have an intro that's tonight, that'll be our first week. And we will cover the eight areas of self-care and we will look at God's word um, about those. We will also include an extra video that will be linked down below that you can link on and get tips um, and other perspectives about self-care. Self-care is a broad area, a very broad topic. And so it will be helpful to have different perspectives and some other uh, ideas and ways that you can make sure that you're taking very good care of yourself. So we'll have our Bible study here from God's Word and then below there will be some links to other videos that will be very, very helpful for you. Um, so let's begin with prayer. Father God, thank you for this time. Thank you for who you are and all that you've done. Help us to know your word and what it means for us to take care of ourselves, to take care of this body and the environment and the spirit and the mind that you've given us, Father God, that we might be able to glorify you. Your word reminds us that your divine power has given us everything that we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own of glory and goodness, Father God. So we look to your word, the knowledge of the one who's called us and you've called us. So we look to you and we look to your word. I pray that you give everybody that's watching a rhema word, a specific encouragement for them in their situation. Help us to just dive into your word expecting um, for you to change our hearts and change our lives um, and just expecting all the good things you're going to do for us. Thank you for who you are and all you've done. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. So again, we will, we will be going through the eight areas of self-care. Those eight areas are Physical self-care, psychological self-care, emotional self-care, social self-care, professional self-care, environmental self-care, spiritual self-care, and financial self-care. So we're going to be going through all eight of those, one per week, and then we will have tonight's introduction and then we'll have a closing at the end so let's jump in we're going to look at elijah second kings chapter one so if you have your bible turn to second kings chapter one i love that god brought us back to elijah because our brothers need to have self-care as well it's not just a feminine thing so if you're a brother out there make sure that you um, listen to this lesson or you listen to other lessons um, if you're maybe more comfortable with listening to different lessons by men or by other brothers but make sure that you get what you need to take care of yourself because it's not just um, a lady thing God calls us all brothers and sisters to be stewards um, of the health and the time and the energy that he's given us and we want to make sure that we take care of our temple and so we're looking at Elijah even though he's a brother um, and normally when we look at Elijah we're gonna we're gonna look in 2nd Kings chapter 1 normally when we look at Elijah we look in 1st Kings and we look at how God delivered him from depression but I want us to look at a different section this time because it just so clearly um, depicts what we're talking about in terms of self-care so let's begin in verse 
7. What has happened is God has called Elijah to go and prophesy against Ahaziah. And he gives this prophecy. He meets Ahaziah's messengers. He gives them his prophecy. They go back and tell Ahaziah um, what Elijah said. And Elijah's like, who is this? And when he finds out it's Elijah who said it, he sends his men to, to, to come and get Elijah and to bring him back to the court. And so this is how that, that works out. Verse 7 says, Then he said to them, this is King Ahaziah, said to them, What kind of man was it who came up to meet you and told you these words? So they answered him, A hairy man wearing a leather belt around his waist. And he said, It is Elijah the Tishbite. Then the king sent to him, that is Elijah, a captain of 50 with his 50 men. So he went up to him, and there he was, sitting on the top of a hill. And he spoke to him, Man of God, the king has said, Come down. So Elijah answered and said to the captain of 50, If I am a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your 50 men. And fire came down from heaven and consumed him and his 50 men. Then he sent to him another captain of 50 with his 50 men. And let me get where I am. And he answered and said to him, the end of verse 10. And he answered and said to him, man of God, thus has the king said, come down quickly. Okay. So the first man says, man of God, the king has said, come down. The second captain of 50 says, man of God, thus has the king said, come down quickly, like now. So Elijah answered and said to them, if I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your 50 men. And the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed him and his 50. Again, he sent a third captain of 50 with his 50 men and the third captain of 50 went up and came and fell on his knees before Elijah and pleaded with him and said to him man of God please let my life and the life of these 50 servants of yours be precious in your sight look fire has come down from heaven and burned up the first two captains of 50s with their 50s but let my life now be precious in your sight. And the angel of the Lord said to Elijah, Go down with him. Do not be afraid of him. So he arose and went down with him to the king. Then he said to him, Thus says the Lord, Because you have sent messengers to inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron, is it because there is no god in Israel to inquire of his word? Therefore, you shall not come down from the bed to which you have gone up, but you shall surely die. So, in verse 17, so Ahaziah died according to the word of the Lord, which Elijah had spoken. Because he had no son, Jehoram became king in his place. In the second year of Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. Now the rest of the acts of Ahaziah, which he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel? Whew. So, we have this story where God has called Elijah to speak, to prophesy to the king. Elijah is in absolute obedience to the word of the Lord. He meets the man's messengers and tells them exactly what God tells him to say that puts him at the request of the king now the king wants to meet with him and wants an audience with him and because the king wants an audience with him he feels like he has the right because he's the king to demand an audience with him he sends captains of 50 
people, not one man, not two, not 10, 50 people. He sends them once, he sends them twice, three times. That is 153 people that he has sent to get an audience with Elijah. I love this because Elijah does not move until the Holy Spirit tells him to move. The lesson for us is there are people, there are things, there are activities that demand our time. If we're going to dive into lessons on self-care, our ultimate goal is going to have to be obedience to the Holy Spirit. It does not matter who is calling your name, who is demanding an audience with you, what they need you to do, what needs to be done. This was the king. And he made it clear to Elijah, hey, I need you. And I need you now. How about you? Has your life ever been demanding like that? And not just necessarily people. Are there responsibilities? Are there activities that call you and say, hey, 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 I need your attention now. It is life, especially living here in the U.S. Life can get hectic. And there is always someone or something demanding an audience with us. God's example in Elijah is that we can just simply say no. Elijah went a step further. He called down fire. Okay, that is an example of permanent release. Elijah said, I'm not dealing with you done fire falls down and while we hate to be that extreme about it there will be some times when we have to say i am done with this area this activity or this person the whole goal in that is that we are obedient only to the voice of the lord it doesn't have anything to do with any personal vendettas. Elijah didn't have anything personally against these soldiers. But he wasn't going to move until the word of the Lord told him to move. And on the third guy, the third captain comes. And that is the one the word of the Lord specifically says in verse 15. And the angel of the Lord said to Elijah, go down with him. Do not be afraid of him. And it says, so he arose and went down with him to the king. Simple as that. I started here because we're going to see that as we look throughout the life of Elijah. In 1 Kings chapter 17. The first thing that we see about Elijah other than that he is a Tishbite. It says, as the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. Verse 2 says, then the word of the Lord came to him saying, get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. For every instance that we will see in the life of Elijah, Everything that he does is only at the command of the word of the Lord. As a matter of fact, we don't really get a complete picture of his life. We only get <clears throat> these snippets where God is telling him, go do this. And then we don't hear anything. Go do this. And we don't hear anything. Go do this. And then we don't hear anything. That is not by accident. Our life needs to be set up that way in as much as it can be. 
What I mean by that is God's word says in Proverbs, in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. So the idea behind that is I have to limit myself. If I'm going to take care of myself, if I'm going to be a steward of my time and of my energy and of my resources, then I cannot get up and go running every time somebody demands an audience with me. Every time somebody says, here's a responsibility, I take it. Every time something, some piece of mail comes in and says, this needs to be done or that needs to be done, and I just, no. The example that we have in Elijah is critical for self-care. I don't have to move until the word of the Lord says, go do this. And it doesn't even have to be anything especially spiritual. In 1 Kings, we're going to see the first thing. In 1 Kings chapter 17, that God tells him to go do in verse 2. It says, you go here because I've commanded somebody to feed you there. It's not even about anything big and spiritual. Now, he does wind up ministering to that lady. But his initial command to go was just because God said, I've got somebody there that's going to feed you. And so it's not just the spiritual things that we have to hearken to the voice of the Lord about. It's the everyday things. What has God commanded me to get done today? So this person wants to call and they want to spend an hour on the phone. How does the Holy Ghost feel about that? And you might say to yourself, who has time to stop and pray about all of these issues? Who has time? Yes, we've got to make time. That's why God's word says, in all your ways, acknowledge him. In all of our ways, we acknowledge him. So we understand that if we're going to make sure that we take care of ourselves, we're going to have to first prioritize the word of the Lord, making sure that we hear God's word and that we obey it and that we aren't obeying the voices of every person and every activity and every responsibility that demands an audience with us. I love as we look at um, 2 Kings chapter 1 verse Excuse me, verse 11 says, Then he sent to him another captain of 50 with his 50 men. And he answered and said to him, Man of God, thus has the king said, Come down quickly. Now, has there ever been anyone or any responsibility or any activity that demands your attention now, quickly? Elijah, in his example, gives us the freedom to not have to respond. Another book that I read calls it the tyranny of the urgent, meaning that there is this idea of stuff that's got to be done immediately or now. Do it, do it, do it now, now, now. And it's not always the most important thing that needs to be done. And it's not always the best thing that needs to be done. It's just feels like the most urgent. It's got to be done now, 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 now. We've got to stop and acknowledge the Lord in all of our ways if we're going to be able to take care of ourselves the way God would have us to. So, I hope that's an encouragement to you. Next week, we will get together and we will talk about physical self-care and the examples that we have in God's word about taking care of ourselves um, physically. Don't forget to click the link below and to watch the very short video about self-care and tips about that. Okay, 
Let's close in prayer. Father God, thank you so much for who you are and all that you've done. Help us to respond to the word of the Lord and not just every voice that's calling for us. Help us to acknowledge you in every decision we make to get up and go or to do. Help it to be at your beck and call, not just everything, every whim that comes to us, Father God. There are a lot of people who claim to need us, a lot of important people with important issues, but we should only be responding to the word of the Lord in our lives. Help us to do that. Please bless your people, everyone who has tuned in to this Bible study. Give them grace to hear your voice and to say no lovingly and in a gracious way and to glorify you with their life and their time. Bless them, Lord. Help us to glorify you. Be with us this evening. In Jesus' name, amen.